This right here is the Void Waker, one of the strongest PvP weapons in Old School RuneScape. The weapon can be created entirely inside of the wilderness, and that is why I decided to make a new level 3, lock it into the wilderness, and not look back until I've created one of my own completely from scratch. My account is a Bronze Man, which is a mix of an Iron Man and normal account. If I get an item once, I can buy it as much as I want from the Grand Exchange, so I will be able to access that area as well. I can both kill NPCs or PK players for upgrades, as long as I've looted an item and once it's open for purchase. I'm super excited to see where this journey will take me, so let's get started. There were two things I had to do before starting my journey into the wilderness. 15 agility to unlock the lowest possible agility training method in the wilderness and one slayer task to unlock wilderness slayer which is going to be an essential part of obtaining the Revenant weapons, as they're all five times more common to drop while on a Revenant Slayer task. Now, before we jump into the Wilderness, let's pick up the first ever Wilderness Slayer task of the entire account. This is a monumental moment. Yes, I understand I must kill it in the Wilderness. Can we get something low level to start off the grind? Rogues, I think that is decently fine. I think there are some lower level ones, but they are definitely deep into the Wilderness. But this is the first time I ever stepped into the wilderness on this account, and we are pretty much stuck in this area for now. So my first course of action is going to be to make some money. I'm going to be picking up these steel plate legs in the wilderness. It is a very risky area, and I have no food, and that is now the item unlocked. The steel plate legs have been unlocked for me to buy and sell on the Grand Exchange, make some money with it, and that's going to be my first source of income. Ooh, would you look at that? We also have an iron scimitar just chilling on the ground right here. Don't mind if I take that one for another unlocked weapon. And of course, we have the big bones as well. Let's just go ahead and unlock those right away. That is big bones unlocked as well. And we can, of course, now buy all of these things. I don't know if there's going to be any use for this crossbow, but I might as well unlock it. And regardless, I can sell it for 170 GP. So after selling these items that I collected, the bronze crossbow does not want to sell. I want to show you guys what the Grand Exchange looks for me as a bronze man. Let's type in Staff of Air, which is something I would love to have at this point. But we cannot buy this. We can only buy this if we have obtained it once through the wilderness. So the biggest problem for me currently is that I have absolutely no food. But shrimp you actually start with when you create your account. We're going to be buying 20 of these to go into the wilderness and make even more money with all this food. So because a lot of the gear and supplies I'm going to have to use in this series is going to come from PKing people, I think magic is the way to go, at least early game, and that's why I'm going to be going through the lava maze, avoiding these Black Knights level 33 to get myself a Staff of Earth, actually get a full inventory of them, and then sell them and get even more runes to level my magic. Look at that beautiful thing on the ground, 720 GP per staff, and it's also of course an unlock, so we now have an actual staff to use for PKing. Of course we do also have the steel plate body with a bit more value, but a bit riskier with the lesser demons being able to hit 8 damage, but if I'm quick, that's another unlock and that's 200 extra GP per pickup. Oh, well, that is, yeah, exactly, that is why that was definitely more risky to do. Well, even though we died, I have some good news. We could at least afford 750 casts of Airstrike and even Earth Strike when I get to that level, because we do have the Earth Staff now, so let's begin training some magic. Ooh, I can already get some revenge for that death. These are actually safe spotable through the fence, and they have negative magic defense. And they also have a pretty good drop table, so we could get some nice unlocks, make some money here, and also get some nice magic experience. That is a massive level. We just unlocked the Earth Strike spell, and this has a base max hit of a 6. Meanwhile, the Air Strike had a base max hit of 2. And oh my god, we're already getting the max hit. Look at that difference. I think that's it. That's the first Lesser Demon killed. 10 magic. What is the first drop going to be? There could be so many good things. 40 coins and a looting bag. Actually, I'll take the looting bag, but this is a bit risky. Also, vile ashes. I think I can sell those for something, so let's see what they're actually worth. Unlocked item, and they are worth 650 GP. That's, that's insane. That's so much money, and I have to run. Oh, there we go. I was waiting for that drop. That unlocks Fire Strike right there. 60 fire runes. I wasn't really sure how I was going to get them, but that is a nice way of getting them. That is an 8 max hit now. Honestly, I think Fire Strike might even be the first PKing ability I use, because it is a pretty budget spell, but it hits really decent. 
Oh, that is the max hit. Did you guys see that? Eight damage, seven damage. Just look at these hits, man. Oh my god. Oh, and there we have a weapon upgrade as well. Steel Scimitar, already upgrading from the Iron Scimitar I picked up earlier, but uh, I'll have to wait to kill this one first. I don't want to go in and get another Lava Maze incident, getting hit 8-8 eight, eight and just go to Lombridge. And we have another massive unlock coming in. I'm going to sneak in and try to pick this up. Death Rune is going to be super useful for higher level magic as well. Right now, I'm probably going to be selling it to just keep the money, but in the future, that's going to be good. That's the last one. That is the last type of runes that I actually needed to unlock from the lesser demons. The chaos runes has been obtained. Oh my god, that just paid for all the runes. Nearly a 5000 GP drop right there. I paid 6k for all the runes. I'll definitely take that. I don't even know how we could have gotten more value from 6000 GP than we just did. We made money. We're going to be selling all of these things in just a bit and see how much we actually made. And from that, we also got all the way to 27 magic and 18 hit points. So let's go ahead and collect all of this loot. 16k cash and we have now a total cash pile of how much? 18.2k. That is pretty decent. We're going to be reinvesting this right away into runes. What I'm about to do is definitely a gamble, but I want to try and do this because I feel like there are some benefits to this, so let's talk about them. I'm going to be killing fire giants in the deepest part of Wilderness, located right here on the minimap. I have two main goals with fire giants. The first one is to level magic, and secondly, I really want a fire battle staff. I believe the fire battle staff is probably the only way to get any type of fire staff in the Wilderness at all. It is a 1 in 128 drop rate, so kind of hard to get... But there is a chance, and on top of that I can get a lot of other good items. Nothing too interesting from the first trip, but 30k of loot for 15k worth of runes, so that is definitely good, we're basically doubling our money here. Okay, so I might as well talk about this, all the herbs that I get from this grind is completely useless because I did not do Druidic Ritual before entering the wilderness, I can't even make potions, and I didn't think I would need to, I probably don't have to because I can PK all the potions. Oh my god, we got a Drune Scimitar, 15k cash and a massive unlock. I actually think the Rune Scimitar when I get 40 attack is going to be the weapon I use all the way to 60 attack until I get Vigora's Chain Maze if I'm lucky enough too. Definitely a bit of a heftier trip right there, 38k cash from that one Rune Scimitar and a tooth half of a key bringing that up quite a lot. Oh, I didn't even think about that. They can drop Strength Potion to those. That's actually going to be so useful for when I want to train attack, strength, and all that good stuff. Because I, I think I only have a, a steel scimitar for that training. So having strength pots are going to be really helpful. I know I said all herbs were useless, but the money is pretty good. I mean, Raynar 5.5k, I'll definitely take that and at least sell it for something. So meanwhile, I was killing these fire giants. I saw low level accounts just in my level range running past here all the time for many hours upon hours. And I thought they, these guys have to be bots. They are bots doing some type of activity at the end of the tunnel and running through the entire time. And I was right. They are actually telegrabbing wines of Samrak. And I thought I might as well try and actually kill one of these because if I can kill one of them, they might have stamina potions, which would be absolutely massive for my account, some food unlocks, or just the Wine of Samurai himself. They are worth quite a lot. Yeah, the problem is I don't have any entangles, any roots, anything like that, so they can just kind of run away from me, and they seem to be bringing a decent amount of food, so I can't just, you know, get a couple of good hits in and I'm good, basically. So I'll probably need some type of snare or entangle for that. After this fire giant right here, we are actually on the drop rate for the fire battle staff and we have not got it yet, but uh, the money is decent, we're definitely profiting from this and the rune scimitar was definitely a highlight. We are making one last rune investment, we have bought 6000 earth bolt casts and uh, if I do not get the fire battle staff on this, I am going to do something else, but uh, let's hope that I do. Oh wait, lobsters? Wait, they can drop lobsters? I didn't even think of that. That's a food upgrade right there. I now have 12 healing food instead of bread, which heals only 5. And by the way, they cost the same. Lobsters are like 170 GP and so is bread. So that's just a straight up upgrade. And there we go. That is 50 magic, a massive spell unlocked. I can't believe I've got 50 magic with basically just casting Earth Bolt for an entire day. 
This account is definitely a bit interesting, but that basically unlocks PKing, I think. We are back with snares and earth blasts with death runes to try to get one of these guys killed, and uh, hopefully I don't splash all the time. That's a massive hit to begin with. 14 damage? Oh my god, we got him. Wait, we actually hit him so hard in the end. Oh my god, look at that loot. 28 law runes? Yeah, that's telegrabbing for sure. One coin... 26k worth in Wines of Samurai. Maybe it's actually worth killing these guys. I'm not too sure, but uh, definitely nice to get my first kill of the account. 32,000 GP for the first kill. I'll definitely take that. It's really fun to PK when like 32k is a massive loot. Oh man, we are definitely at the end of my rune stack. 600 air runes left. And we get another rune scimitar. It's the same drop rate as the fire battle staff, so it's not looking great. Well, it's been around 10 hours of killing fire giants, and we've killed 271 of them. And uh, we have not got the fire battle staff. We are well over two times the drop rate, so I'm going to be calling it here, and we're going to do something else. So after selling all the fire giant loot, I decided to buy 263 big bones, because together with the ones I already had, we now should have enough exactly to get 43 prayer on the chaos altar, Hopefully we do not get PK'd, so let's get into it. To risk as little as possible, I'm not bringing any noted bones, just going to have a full inventory of big bones. I'm going to be running from Ferox Enclave all the way up to the Chaos Altar right here, and I'm going to be running all the way back. After that, I can restore my run energy at these pools right here, so I should be able to at least run most of the time. Okay, look at this now. It's always so satisfying in the beginning. You just get levels upon levels. Just look at the uh, top right corner on my like XP tracker. It's just level upon level. It's so awesome. Oh my god, I am so close. This is the last bone that I have and I'm 42, only 440 experience off. Can we keep getting... Okay, there we go. That's the last one. 387 experience off. But you know what? Maybe these accounts have some bones and uh, i want to get into some pking so you know what i'm going to get some snares i'm going to spend some money on it and we're going to try to get some bones from these people using them definitely a bit of a risky move risking 22.5k out of the like 50k cash that i have left over but uh, i think it might be worth it oh he's low level oh i can attack him he has like no hp he has 10 hp uh, this took a while actually to find someone we got a pk let's go dude oh my god oh my god oh my god what did uh, this guy did not expect to die there is no way whole how much is that 4.5 million and we also got stamina potions and he had he had 76 000 gp on him oh my god what just happened I'm sure this guy, looking at the stats, look at this, 94 prayer as the first thing. He probably brought so much risk, thinking no one could really attack him. I could not have hit a better target. This is a count-changing early game. Look at the amount of money I'm getting from this. 4.4 million GP. And I was just scraping enough money to get uh, the big bones that I needed to get 43 prayer, which we still haven't got yet, but uh, we definitely have the money for it now. Having these stamina potions makes everything so much nicer. Of course, I will probably level agility in the future anyways to get it just higher for shortcuts and all that good stuff. But yeah, stamina potions makes a massive difference. But here we go. This is finally the goal of 43 prayer and we're going to be unlocking all the protection prayers, which of course is going to be super useful for both PVMing and future PKing. So that is now nice to have unlocked. But that is where I'm going to be ending the first episode of the series. I have some massive goals in mind for episode number two. And with the newfound wealth, I think we have some awesome goals to get to. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe if you actually enjoyed this series and want to see more of it in the future. And let me know with some feedback in the comments as well. But I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. In the future of this account, I will need to train a lot of Slayer and stack up Slayer points to get as many Revenant tasks as possible to receive the Vigorous Chain Mace, the Craft's Bow and the Thamoran Scepter. But before I really get into training all my combat stats and Slayer on top of that, I want to unlock an Amulet of Glory. The Amulet of Glory is a super good hybrid necklace that is going to speed up the melee training, range training and mage training all at the same time. The only way of getting an Amulet of Glory in the Wilderness is to PK for it, so that is exactly what we're going to be doing in this video.
Now, there are two items I want to unlock before I get into PKing or just overall doing more combat on the account, and that is the Blighted Manta Ray and the Blighted Super Restore. These are dropped at pretty frequent drop rates of any revenants that you kill in the entire revenant cave. Actually, all the revenants in the entire caves have the same drops on their table, just at varying different drop rates. I decided to go for the Revenant Goblins as they only have 14 HP so they're very easy for me to kill and they have a decent drop rate of both the Blighted Manta Ray and the Blighted Super Restore. And of course Revenants drop Ether and the Bracelet of Ethereum which is going to be essential for killing Revenants in the future and charging the Revenant weapons. I also made some decent money in Battle Staves, Dragonstone Bolt Tips, Onyx Bolt Tips and actually a Rune Plate Leg drop which was worth almost 80k and actually, I need room plate legs in the future as just an unlock. That is the drop we wanted. A double blight and manta ray. These do indeed always heal 22 HP, which is basically half my HP. Oh, we did it. We finally got the super restore. This is how many kills it took. Actually, way over the drop rate. The investment have been made. We're going to be using this for Slayer. And of course, what we're going to be doing right now, heading over to the Fountain of Rune and see if we can find any poor victims that might be able to give me an Amulet of Glory. The great thing about this area is that I can attack anyone who is level 3 to 97, so even if there are low level accounts who think they are safe, I can attack them. Oh my god, there's a guy here! Yes, we actually got an attack in. 11 damage, he's dead! Let's go, please give me the glories, please, please. Ah, oh, ring of wealth, but oh my god, that's 300k, I'll definitely take that. That is an unlock as well, of course, but I definitely should have brought my looting bag. Actually, you know what? I'm really happy with that because this is a teleport I can actually use above 30 wilderness. It allows me to teleport right to the Grand Exchange. Oh, we found someone! Oh, I'm so excited because this takes so long. It's like 30 minutes, 45 minutes of just world hopping between every single kill. This guy has no gear equipped, 40 HP around my level so I can attack him the entire time. Please just be the guy with glories, please. And he's dead. Alright, please give me the glories. What? A changing plan is needed. I've been here now for roughly five and a half hours and the only people I found are the ones you've seen. I am going to actually level my magic to 60, get the Flames of Samurai spell and use it outside of the arena. This should help me kill players and actually have more options in the wilderness of areas where I can kill people for an amulet of glory. So let's get 60 magic. And the monster of choice I'm going to be leveling my magic on is actually the ice giants in the slayer cave. These have a decent chance of dropping an adamant sword which is going to be essential for my melee training in the future. These are actually not half bad as well, Mithril plate legs unlocked and I can actually use these right now. But of course I'm using magic so we're going to have to wait to use them. Oh, well, that is the wrong adamant weapon, adamant dagger, the baby version of it, but I guess I'll unlock it. And there we go, that is the adamant sword unlocked, and I think actually, oh, I need to get it out of my looting bag, but I think actually I'm going to stop right there, I only really needed that, but now to train my magic, I think I might just do Slayer. In the first episode of this series, I did pick up a rogue task, so that is what we're going to be completing. First off, we have 86 of them to do. Ooh, you can actually make some money from these 6,000, don't mind if I do. A bit of a fun fact, I guess, I can never complete a single easy clue step because there is zero wilderness steps on easy clue scrolls. And the first task is completed, let's get another one. Oh, 86 bandits, that's actually pretty good. Wait, these drop adamant scimitars? Why did I even go for the adamant sword then? That is such a good upgrade. Even though it's really cool to see my slayer levels going up, I don't actually need slayer levels for anything in the wilderness. All I really need is the slayer points for in the future being able to skip a lot of tasks to get as many revenant tasks as I possibly can. And there we go, that is 59 magic, only one more level to go until we can get to the insanely good weapon and cape. And that is task number two, completed. Alright, another easy task, 60 Chaos Druids, I will be killing the small ones in the Edgeville dungeon, it is in a PvP area, so I am allowed to kill them. You know, actually on just this task, I'm going to do it with melee, and then I'll get 60 magic on the next one after. I need to get my melee stats up anyways, now that I have the Adamant Scimitar and the Rune Scimitar after that, and I will need it anyways for the Vigoras Chain Maze at the high end game, so just this one task with melee. Wait, why does my character have such a voluptuous dumb? Could Mithril Bolts actually be useful for ranged training in the future? If I can get a rune crossbow and get all the way up to 61 ranged somehow, 
I guess it could be pretty decent, but at that point I might have already PK'd someone for better bolts. I would say that was pretty successful, task completed, 15 attack and 17 strength. That is a pretty hefty task, 102 hellhounds, but it is a pretty decent task. They are weak to magic, so this is going to be the task I get 60 magic. And there we go, that is 60 magic completed, it's time for some upgrades. It is actually extremely easy to complete the mage arena, all you need to have is protector magic and you will take absolutely zero damage. You need to kill a boss that has a bunch of different faces, starting off really simple and ending up with a black demon with like 170 HP, but all the damage the boss does is magic. So you can just protect from magic and attack the boss until it dies and that is everything you need to do. And there we go, that is the final hit on the boss, Mage Arena 1 has been completed. And there it is, the Samurai Capes, we got a bunch of them, they are completely free, so if I die losing them it's not a big deal. And we have the Samurai Staff, now before I can actually use this outside of the Mage Arena, I need to do 100 casts inside of the arena. But luckily, last episode we did get Blood Runes unlocked, and the spell requires that. And I've already bought a bunch of them. So why I have to do 100 casts inside the arena is because it says you're not yet experienced enough to use the spell outside of the mage arena, so I just have to cast it 100 times on any of the monsters in here. So my previous max hit with Earth Blast was 15, and with the Flames of Samurak we can hit up to 20 damage. So it is going to be a lot stronger, and there we go, that is the max hit already done. One last cast, and there we go, congratulations, I can now use it outside of the mage arena, and it's time to try to PK a glory. So after my previous experience with the Fountain of Rune, spending like 5 hours there seeing absolutely no one risking a glory, I decided to give a shot at the Chaos Altar again, because I was hoping that maybe someone is going to bring an Amulet of Glory and a bunch of superior Dragon Bones, which actually protects over the glory, and just get it that way. And we have the first kill, I don't think this guy had a glory unfortunately, but uh, 62k in Dragon Bones, I'll definitely take that. I don't think this guy has a glory, but I think he came from the Lava Maze, meaning that he probably has a Burning Amulet, and that is actually Wilderness Teleports, so maybe I can get that. Yes, he did have it, look at that, Burning Amulet 2, unfortunately that means I can't purchase them, because it needs to be a fully charged one for me to be able to buy it from the GE. But uh, that's at least two teleports I can use. I have a better idea. I just realized there's probably a bunch of bots at the Lava Dragons. And there seems to be one there already. And uh, I think they should have Glories equipped. Do they? Yes, it looks like he actually does have a Glory on him. And uh, these are probably the most free kills ever for me. I don't know if they're actually risking the Glory though. But in case they get like a Rune Kite Shield drop, they might actually start risking it. And the first guy is dead, let's see what is going to be dropping us. St oh wait, Staff of Fire! I was grinding that the entire last video and I could have just gone here and killed a bot for it, that is funny. Oh, well, that is at least the Staff of Fire unlocked. I do have a way better staff now of course, but uh, that's pretty nice. Also the Lava Dragon Bones, Black Dragon Hide, I don't think- This is just a lot of money I guess. And that is another one down, got some help by the Lava Dragon, thank you so much. All these bots basically do nothing. Uh, Runite Bolts? Oh my god, wait, Rune Darts, Runite Bolts, Adamant Plate Body, all of these things might be really useful actually in the future. Adamant Plate Body definitely is an upgrade, and Runite Bolts and Darts might be a really good way of leveling range in the future, especially Darts. I guess this guy's name fits pretty well, Dead NPC 241 is now dead for Chaos Rune, Staff of Fire, yeah, nothing too special this time. By the way, these bots are coded to log out as soon as they see someone who is scald, so uh, have a look at this, look how fast these guys log out. There's going to be a guy on my right here, and I'm right there, and he's gone. Yeah, so <laughs> it's pretty hard to actually catch them. Oh, very nice. Just been actually burying the Lava Dragon Bones that I PK, and we have got 45 prayer and unlocked another Mage Prayer bonus. Oh, no way. We actually have a real player who's killing Lava Dragons that I can actually kill, and I think... I don't think he has a glory on. He looks like a bit of an Iron Man. I think that's an Amulet of Accuracy, but I could get something good from this. And he's dead. Let's see what the verdict is going to be. Can we get anything useful? Oh, we get... Wait, Desert Robes? That's fashion, I don't think they give any stats. Blue Wizard Hat, that is actually an upgrade, and the Amulet of Accuracy is also an upgrade. It doesn't give great stats, but at least we have a necklace now and a hat. 
Guys, I am pleased to say I have figured it out. I know how to always catch these bots before they log out. The way I'm going to be doing it is like this. I am spam clicking on the screen as I world hop and as soon as I world hop into a bot, I just auto hit it. And uh, most of the time I can actually hit them with a melee before they get to log. And honestly, this strategy of killing bots was working really well. I was getting a bunch of kills until uh, this unfortunate thing happened. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Why is he exactly on that tile? I am... Okay, I think this is going to be the first death. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that is the first death of the account from a PKer. After that, I actually took a break from Lava Dragons and I thought maybe I can kill someone who is flinching the Chaos Elemental and uh, get some help from the Chaos Elemental to actually do damage to the players as well. And this guy had Proselyte, which means that he has like no magic defense and I could just destroy him. And that is it. We got the guy and I think he had a glory on him, so there is a chance. That is a lot of items. I see Climbing Boots. Oh, wait, Ancient Blessing. That is actually a really good item, but unfortunately no glory in there. But the only thing that I can use here that I see right now is the Ancient Blessing, which gives one prayer bonus, which is going to be super good because, I mean, that's just less prayer potions that I have to use during the grinds. Yeah, I don't think this guy is risking anything, but might as well kill everyone. You never know. This guy could have like a 10 million cash pile on him. Wait, actually, that's good. Ring of Dueling 8. As I said before, an item has to be fully charged for me to be able to buy it from the GE, and uh, that is now actually Rings of Dueling unlocked. Oh my god, no way. Wait, this guy is actually using a glory, and he's a PKer, and he has a granite sword. I'm pretty sure that the granite sword is protected over the glory. I, I need to fight this guy. This is like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, I feel like. I've been here for like four hours killing bots, and finally, I find someone who's actually peeking, risking a glory in my bracket. Is he going to die? Please, Lava Dragon, hit him! He's protecting from magic! I think he's using Bind. I'm not entirely sure or if that actually is Snare, but I feel like my roots are longer than his, so I might actually be able to just stick on him forever. Is this it? Is he out of food? No, he still has food! How much food do you have, man? We've been fighting for like three minutes now. No, please don't gap me! Yes, I keep getting the roots all the time. I need to get this guy. I feel like this is like the one opportunity to get a glory right now. I think he's out of food. Please, I think he's dead here. This has to be a glory. There's no way he can be protecting the glory over the granite sword. He's dead. Please give me the glory. Give me it. Yes, it's on the ground. Oh my god. Finally, we got the glory. That took me like 10 hours of hunting PKers, or mostly bots actually. And we finally found someone who was risking a glory, who was an actual PKer. This was probably the most satisfying way of getting a glory. Just look how good this is. 10 in every single attack bonus, 3 in every defense, 3 prayer bonus, 6 melee strength. That is exactly why I wanted this before I started training all my ranged and my melee. Now, with the Amulet of Glory in my possession, we can start training combat for real and get into the higher tiers of the combat brackets and PK possibly some really good gear. But that is going to be for the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. This episode requires no long introduction. This is going to be a combat training all through Slayer episode. We're going to be seeing how far I can get my combat stats in this video. Just the first task, because I have Hellhounds from the last video, I'm just going to be completing this with magic, but for the future tasks, I will do my best to try and get ranged or melee training in. Oh, no way. No way! So early into the video! I will put the drop rate of that on the screen right now. Look how rare that is. 750k! Okay, I need to go and bank, but oh my god, that is a good drop to get early. You know what this is right here? That is around 4,000 death runes to train magic with. Oh my goodness, the first Larence key of the account. I'm going to save up all of these in this video as I'm going to be doing a lot of Wilderness Slayer. It's going to be super interesting to see how many I can collect and then open at the end of the video. And I'm going to be risking all of them in one run. So if I die, that's going to be tragic. Oh, oh, it's looking good. Already a second Larence key, not that deep into this task. If it keeps this luck up, we're going to be opening a lot of them at the end. But let's go ahead and pick up the first new task of this video. I would love to get any task that gives me an excuse to train melee or ranged, so let's see what the first task is going to be. 
97 lesser demons? Ooh, that's a safe spotable task, so I guess we're going to try and train some ranged. Now, before we get into ranged training, I only have bronze arrows right now, but the hill giant in the deep wilderness cave has a good chance of dropping iron arrows, which should speed up the process quite a lot on the lower level, so let's go ahead and get them. And there they are, my new best arrows on the account to train range with, iron arrows has now been unlocked. I do not allow you to laugh. This is my setup. You know, I do have a feeling that I will not be able to kill a lesser demon at my current range level at like 1 or 2 with a short bow and iron arrows, but I'm going to give it a try. If not, I'm going to have to come back to Slayer a bit later in the video after I've trained up my combat stats a bit. Reporting back after like one and a half minutes since the last clip and we've gained 48 experience and the monster has lost 0 HP. So yeah, that's not happening. Instead, I've headed over to the Revenant Caves and I'm going to be training my ranged on the Revenant Imps. They are actually pretty good target dummies to train on because they have low defense, so I can actually hit them with low level. And on top of that, they heal themselves, so I can actually just kind of go AFK, and right there, they're healed, and it's full HP again. First ranged milestone, 10 ranged has been achieved with the short bow and iron arrows, definitely took a while. 20 ranged... Oh my god, I had no idea this plugin had this feature. If you go to Collection Log on Bronze Man, you see how many unlocks you have and every single item unlocked. That is insane. That's actually so useful. You can just search and see what items you have unlocked. It has actually been a very long time. The short bow and the iron arrows are very bad, but that is now finally 40 ranged achieved, and it is now time to head over to Lava Dragons try to get rune knives unlocked at a 1 in 32 drop rate, and then train ranged at a way faster pace. So a bit of post commentary before I get into live commentary, but uh, I went to Lava Dragons to try to get rune darts unlocked because they have a decent chance of dropping them to level my range from 40 all the way to whatever level I wanted. Uh, this guy attacked me the second I got here, and he had three keys on him, he was scald, and he had terrible damage. So I was like, you know what, I might as well try to attack him and see if I can kill him because I have full inventory of food and pretty decent magic level. This guy's definitely trying to escape. I don't even know like how much food he has because he has three keys. I'm wondering if he's been here for a while killing bots. Is he not eating? I don't think he's eating at all. Is he out of food already? I've only been fighting him for like two minutes at this point. What is he risking, even? He's dead! Wait, what is he risking? Ring a well. Magic shortbow! No way! We got a magic shortbow and three keys as well! I wanted rune darts where we have magic shortbow now! That is so huge, actually! Now I need to get 50 ranged. Did he have anything else here that I actually think... I don't even know what else he had. I was just ho so hyped about the magic shortbow. And here we go, that is the magic shortbow unlocked officially, and the mithril arrows as well, which I don't think is going to be very useful, I already have rune arrows. Alright, let's see what the keys are like, 44k, 44k, 32k, he was probably just killing, yeah, he was definitely just killing the bots there, so probably nothing too interesting. You know, I might not have rune knives, but I do have access to rune darts from Lava Dragon's last video, and we're going to be using that, even though it's very expensive, from 40 to 50 ranged, now that I have the magic shortbow, that is really all that matters to get to 50 ranged. Oh my god, this is so good compared to the shortbow. I just... <laughs> it's such an upgrade, right? From shortbow and like iron arrows all the way to rune darts getting consistent hits and XP drops. I made a massive mistake. I honestly didn't think there would be too many low-level PKers in the Revenant Caves, but uh, I just died with 800 rune darts. That's like 200k cash. Hopefully I can get lucky from the Revenant drops and get that back pretty easily. So we're getting really close to 50 ranged and I just got two rune warhammers. Now I do have a rune scimitar already, but if I need a crush weapon, this is actually best in slot for me for a long time. Probably until I get the Vigoras Chainmail, so that is a good drop. Oh my god, another massive unlock rune kai shield. My previous best shield was the mithril square shield, so that is quite an upgrade. I just got Dragon Longsword. I can never use that because you need the Lost City completed, but uh, that is a lot of money. And finally, we are getting done with ranged here. 50 ranged incoming if I can get some good hits on the Pyrofiend in right here. 
and we will be able to use the best in slot ranged weapon for a long time until we actually get the crafts bow i think maybe the rune crossbow in the future might be better for pking but that is now the magic short bow unlocked and we can get back to slayer now on top of having the magic short bow i also unlocked rune arrows in the first episode of the series from fire giants and that is now the magic short bow with the rune arrows which is going to be really strong compared to what i had before now there is only one thing we're missing for the range setup except for armor of course, that is the magic shortbow scroll to imbue the magic shortbow giving it some slight accuracy bonuses and reducing the special attack drain from 55% per use to 50% and that is dropped by wilderness slayer so hopefully I can get that in this video. Oh, we got a Slayer Enchantment. This is actually the item to upgrade the Slayer Staff, which requires 50 magic and 55 Slayer, to then be a tier 75 magic weapon, but can only be used on Slayer tasks. But that is actually going to be super useful for in the future, if I ever need a high tier magic weapon on Slayer tasks that is actually very cheap to use, so I'll definitely be keeping that. And that is the lesser demon task completed, and actually the first slayer points of the entire account, which is 25. The wilderness slayer luckily gives a lot of slayer points. Actually didn't record it, but I finished 101 mammoths that took like 3 hours to complete, and we got a Laren's key, so the next task is going to be rogues. That's perfect for melee training. Last video from a PK, I unlocked super combat potions, 2 dose, and it's time to buy 50 of them, decant them into 4 doses, and actually use that mean while doing melee training. It's going to speed up the process by quite a lot. Now the unfortunate case is that I will have to use a steel scimitar all the way to 30 attack so that is the first milestone we need to reach after that we can use the adamant scimitar that we got from the bandits in the last video so that should speed it up all the way to 40 where we have the rune scimitar waiting. We are officially deep into the melee arc of this video and we can now equip the adamant scimitar. The next milestone of course is at 40 for that beautiful rune scimitar which is going to be our best in slot for a while. We can finally make the last melee weapon upgrade until we get the Vagora's Chain Mace on this account, which is the Rune Scimitar. This will serve me well in the future of the account, and that is now 40 attack achieved. And let's go ahead and equip that Rune Scimitar. Look at the stats. 16 extra melee strength and 16 more accuracy. And it looks better. We just hit 10 Wilderness Slayer tasks, and the amount of points you get from Wilderness Slayer is wild. We're already up to 220 overall Slayer points, which is going to be super good for skipping tasks in the future for Revenants. You know what this save spot reminds me of? It reminds me of like the Pokemon games when there's like one small little tree or bush in the way and you can't pass even though the path is like 10 times the size of that bush. Yeah. Oh no way. Another Trover Parchment! I am so lucky. These are so rare by the way. 800,000 GP, 2 in 1 video. Yeah, that's pretty good. There was just an update on RuneScape and they made a massive change for my account. I can now use the special attack orb right here while in the wilderness. Before you could not do that, you had to press right here to be able to use it. But just as I get my magic short bow, I can now so smoothly use it, which is super nice. And that is actually not all. You can now filter your prayers just like you can with magic. So if I remove, for example, all that, I only have the useful prayers that I need right now, which is really insane. I wonder how this is going to impact PKing. An absolutely massive level actually coming in and a few hits here, 82 experience left, 60 ranged. The levels are just flying by now that I have the rune arrows and the magic uh, short bow. But 60 is actually a massive level because... This allows me now to use the Crafts Bow, which is going to be my best in-slot weapon for the Wilderness. Except the Web Weaver Bow, which is for 70 right below that. But for that, I need to get really lucky on the Wilderness bosses. I started a Bronze Man because of you lol with my real life friends. Oh, that is so nice. Good luck to you and shout out to Bronze Kiddo and the Squad Man. It took some time, but finally we have the magic short bow scroll on an Anku task, which I've been at for like three and a half hours. This was absolutely terrible mailing it, but let's go ahead and make the magic short bow. So right here I have the magic short bow imbued, and the normal one has 69 range accuracy. Meanwhile, the imbued one has 75. And on top of that, as I said earlier, the special attack now only drains 50 instead of 55, so this is going to be super useful. Oh, we finally got the Revenant task. Only 59 of them, but I've been doing Slayer now on and off for like two entire days. And we finally got the first one. Now, we're going to be doing this in a spicy way, so get ready for it. 
So for this and all future Revenant tasks, I'm going to be killing the Revenant Knights. They have the best drop rates of the item, but they are pretty tough to kill. And pretty much impossible for me to kill at this current point, unless I use this safe spot right here. It is very easy to set up, you just shoot the NPC, run to this tile, and then the second tile, and when it hits you again, you run to the third one, and at this point, you can just pretty much AFK it. Definitely a very slow process, but that is the first kill. It took me like two and a half minutes to get done, but definitely worth it for the greater chance of getting the rare items. If there was actually one item I could choose to get first out of all the rare items from Revenant, it would actually be the Amulet of Avarice, which is one of the more common items of the rare items, and this actually buffs your damage against Revenant by a large margin, notes all your items when you get them, and also keeps you scald at all times. So this is actually such an insanely good quality of life item when killing revenants that it would ease up the entire grind for me. So if I could see that, that would be incredible. Oh no way, I actually got attacked. That took a while before I actually did get attacked, but yeah, I don't know if I can escape this. Oh, we did land the snare. Maybe this can actually be good enough. If I can run here, it doesn't even say I'm snared. Oh, I can run now. He's still snared, I think. I think I got a gap. I got a gap. I think we're good. I think we actually made it out. Yeah, we did. Let's go. Oh, that's a good drop. Maybe I should actually just bank that. And on top of that, that is not just money. That is a great unlock for the account. When I get to 60 defense, that is going to be probably the best in slot for me to use. And we're down to the last Revenant Knight of the task. The last drop is going to be... Nothing too special, but the loot from this is incredibly good. The amount of money I make from this is really, really useful for the account. Keeping my money up is definitely pretty difficult when I also get PK sometimes, so having this as a money maker is pretty good. We are about to hit one of the last defense levels I'm going to be getting for a long time. 40 defense because this allows me to use all the different Dragonhide armors. And of course, rune armor as well. Which is going to be pretty nice for melee training so I don't have to use prayers like protect from melee and all that stuff. But most importantly, as I mentioned, Black Dehide only requires 40 defense to use. And that is probably going to be my best in slot gear for a lot of wilderness activities. I'm also currently, by the way, just saving up all the points that I basically get, and we're up to 480 after 20 tasks. These Trover Parchments just keep dropping, and on top of that, I did get a Genie Agility Lamp, so I might as well use that. But the first one I think I got was like 750k, if I remember correctly in this video, and now they're like 920k. Admittedly, I have skipped some tasks, so I did lose some points, but that is now 30 wilderness tasks completed. We're still going strong. There is a guy with full runecrafting outfit, level 61, that I keep seeing running past here to the Mage of Samurai doing runecrafting. So I'm going to try and actually root him next time he comes by and try to kill him with my magic short bow. Oh, there he is. Look at this guy, his runecrafting obviously in the abyss when you go inside of it you do get scald automatically and he has an untrimmed runecrafting cape so let's see if we can kill him. Dude I'm hitting so good and he's dead, let's see what he has. He might have something that's good. Oh he had phoenix necklace, actually a good upgrade. That is really good because when you have this equipped and you get hit to I think it's like 15 or 10% HP it actually automatically heals you and consumes the necklace. One of the end goals I've been working on in this video has been 70 ranged and we just hit it on this ice giant task which we only have 14 left of which is actually going to be the last task of this video as well because this is a milestone task of 40 which I think is a pretty good point to end at with the combat stats that I kind of wanted to reach being achieved. Of course, 70 ranged is the requirement to use Black Dragonhide, which my goal of this series is going to be to have on this account and use for probably all the Wilderness Bosses activities and PKing, and uh, that is now also the task done. 40 Wilderness tasks, 970 overall Slayer points gained in just this video. It is now finally time after all this layer to open the 13 Larence keys that I've accumulated, and yes, I'm going to be risky with it. I'm going to go with all of them in the same inventory, Hopefully I do not get PK'd if I get caught this deep into the wilderness, pretty much anyone can attack me. This location on the map right here is where you open the keys, and that is literally as deep into the wilderness as you can possibly get. People all the way from level 10 to 120 can actually attack me here. But let's go ahead and open them and see what we can get. And we're down to the last three keys for Torstal Seeds. 
gold ore and the last one is coal let's have a price check at all of these items 1.2 million i do not say no thank you to now, before we end this video, I want to give you guys a quick update on the bank value of this account. So we currently have 4.77 million GP with most of it or around half of it being in pure cash and the rest of it being in random miscellaneous items and the blighted super stores. But I am so ready for what we're going to be doing in the next video. We're going to be peaking better gear and get some massive upgrades. Now, since I got 70 ranged and 40 defense in the last video, the first step of this video is going to be to try to get a decent PKing setup to be able to kill people to obtain the black dragonhide armor from probably bots or PKers in the Revenant Caves. Now, the reason why I'm standing here at the crazy archaeologist is because he has two items we need, the red dehyde body at a drop rate of 1 in 32 and the rune crossbow at a drop rate of 1 in 25. So I do have the magic shortbow imbued, but for PKing, if I have to kill people within just 6 levels of wilderness, I need the rune crossbow and some more ranged accuracy to be able to kill them in time. And I do have runite bolts unlocked, so that is going to be the bolts I use for when I get the crossbow as well. And can we get spoon on the first one? Oh my god, we actually did! No way! <laughs> okay, that is two wrong crossbows. Of course, the item itself unlocked as well. And some combat tasks. You can see in the background, rune crossbow unlocked. Actually spooned, but uh, we are not done yet. We still need the red dragonite body. But uh, yeah, that's one of them done. Yo, the best fashion scape in the game. Let's equip the fedora. Doesn't give any stats, but goddamn, does it look good. We got ourselves a long bone that is actually not as rare as you might think. It's one in 64 from the crazy archaeologist, but uh, more rare than the item we need. Oh, no way! Uh, that's a back to back. You can't see it in the chat, but you can still see the long bone in my inventory. Okay, that is pretty rare to get. What is happening? It's not triple back to back, but very close to. Oh, dragon arrows. They are actually pretty rare. One in 128, but can only be used with dark bow and twisted bow. And I think something else, but yeah, not very useful for me. Oh, let's go. There it is. The red dehyde body has been achieved. 29 KC. That did not take long. Actually below the drop rate of 32. So yeah, let's go and actually get some PKs done. The best bolts I have unlocked is Runite bolts. We bought 1,000 of those for 172k to accompany our new rune crossbow. A 108 XP drop? 25! Okay, so 25 is the max hit with this setup. It's a very bad setup. Yes, I am aware of that. Getting a PK is going to be very, very rough. But if I can hit at least 25 compared to what I think was hitting like 16 max hit with the MSB, definitely could be the difference of getting a KO or not. I'm trying to flinch this boss just to see if I can get enough damage in to get one of those totems. I don't really know how it works, to be honest, but uh, it's not looking great, to be honest. And I am being attacked, but I'm dead. Okay, well, I guess <laughs> we're gear re-gearing in a bit. I think we have found the biggest noob ever, TF2 Master 409. Oh my god, I'm hitting so hard on him. He is just screwing up everything. He started running south first, then he started running north. I don't really know what is even happening. But if I'm going to be killing anyone, it has to be this guy. Dude, at this point, he is 100% out of combat, but he's just not logging out. So I'm just, <laughs> please, just let me freeze him. That's all I want. He's the biggest noob. Oh, I hit him. He's in combat again. And he's walking. He has no stamina bots. Man, I'm dumb. No way. Did he actually think the exit was over here? I, I think it was back in the days, but please just give me the hits. Please. He has to run so far now. And honestly, I don't even know how much food he has. He doesn't seem to have a lot. Oh, we caught the freeze. I don't think he actually has any food left because he's not eating at all. And he doesn't seem to have stamina potions either because he's just walking. There is no way. He's dead. 15 dead. Please just risk the dehyde. Yes, he was risking the dehyde. Luckily, the dehyde is very cheap. It's like 6k per item. Oh my god. So I think he saved the archer's helm. Maybe the rune crossbow, glory, and maybe something else over that if he had protect item. Oh my god, snakeskin boots as well and ranging potion. Divine raging potion. That is such a big upgrade for any ranged activities that I want to do. Look at me. I look like an absolute PK god. So with my gear before the Black Dehyde, I had 125 ranged bonus. And with these equipped and the snakeskin boots, 
we have 150. That is an absolutely massive accuracy increase. And on top of that, of course, we have a plus 11 range boost with the Divine Raging Potions. But now that I have all this gear, I think the best course of action is going to be to get back into Slayer and get as many Revenant tasks as I possibly can and try to get the Revenant weapons. I do have some ideas that do not require the Revenant weapons, but if I can get them, that is obviously the best. Yes, that is what we want to see. That is nearly a maxed Revenant task. They can be given from 50 all the way to 100. So 97, that's just pretty close to 100 as you can get. This is also a perfect moment to try out the Divine Ranging Potions on the Revenants with the Black Dehyde and Divine Ranging Potions. My damage on the Revenant should be absolutely insane compared to the first time I was there. Alright, let's give it a go. Let's drink the Range Potion, pray ranged, and see how consistently we can hit before I had to- Oh my god, is someone already going to- Bro, I just want to record a clip of using my upgrades. I'm hitting this guy so good, I guess I can try my upgrades on this guy instead. Oh my god, is actually going to die? I actually made the PK escape, that is so funny. Oh, well, I guess that shows my gear is good. So last time I killed Revenant Knights, I used around 80 arrows every single kill, and this time it's about to die, and I used a total of 43 arrows for this kill. So my DPS pretty much doubled with all these upgrades. Oh my god! Yo! We got the Avarice! That is the perfect item that I wanted! This is such a good upgrade. This is basically just keep me scald the entire time, which means I don't have to go back to Edgeville and re scald myself. And it also gives a 20% damage buff towards Revenants. Obviously, using the Avarice is going to be a bit risky, but all the money that I get from the Revenants is so insanely good anyway, so I should be completely fine even if I do get smited. And if I don't get smited, I'm really only risking 168k, so it's not that bad. By the way, I just checked my Revenants tab, and it says that I have an Ancient Statuette unlocked, and uh, I think I actually got this from hitting one of the Superior Revenants one time, and then just peaced out, and it actually dropped on the ground in the cave for me, and unlocked it on the collection log, even though I never picked anything like that up. Hey, we just got the new max hit, we hit 21 damage, and my previous max hit before that was actually only 18, so this necklace gave me 3 extra max hits. And there it is, that is the first Revenant task completed in this video, and we have over a thousand Slayer points. This is all the loot, and what a task this was. 3.7 million from one task, and this task flew by now that I have the Avarice. This was really insanely fast. So with over a thousand points now, I feel like it's time to start skipping some of the more slower tasks and only do the ones that are really fast and revenant. Now, unfortunately, I can't block any task because you need quest points for that. And on top of that, revenant tasks are pretty rare. So I could really be spending a lot of these points in a short amount of time. But tasks like this, I can still do because they're so quick. We just finished 50 wilderness tasks total for 375 points. And if you're curious, we are now 60 Slayer. Now the thing is, I don't really need this for anything. I don't really have any creatures I need to kill in the wilderness. And they're not really useful for anything. So the level is kind of irrelevant. But uh, 50 tasks for all the points is really good. Besides trying to get Revenant Slayer tasks, I've been trying to pick as many melee tasks as possible, for example just skeletons that are really easy to do, because I need to get 60 attack for the Vigoras Chain Maze in the future if I get it from Revenants. But for my glove slot, I've not really had anything for the entire account, and this is of course bad for every single combat style, but I was just tipped off by this guy in Discord, saying that there are currently level 64, 70, lava dragon bots that are equipped and risking a combat bracelet and the stats for that is right here on the screen six melee strength is one and a half new max hits so this could be absolutely massive so i'm going to finish this task and then try to get one of those pks it honestly didn't take long before i found one of the bots that the guy was talking about papa soup one his stats by the way is on the screen right now so you can definitely confirm that this is a bot account I was hitting absolutely insane on this guy, and he then ran into Lava Dragons, and he got absolutely smashed. Now, there is only one small problem with this. Yes, indeed, he dropped the combat bracelet, but look at my looting bag. It is opened. If you do not loot the item directly, 
on a bronze man, you don't unlock it. And I was attacked by PK, probably the owner of the bot farm, right as I picked that up. So right now, if I die and I do not get out of this situation, I'm going to be losing the combat bracelet unlock as I looted it in the looting bag. And at this point, I was feeling a bit stressed out. I feel like the only way we get out of this is if I unequip my black dehyde, try to land a snare on him and escape that way. So let's try it. Please just land. Oh, it splashed. Oh, he splashed on me as well. Let's. Can I equip it and try to just get a gap here maybe? I think that's my only chance to just try to get a snare on him and run away in that way. Maybe I got gap? Maybe I actually got gap? Oh my god, no way he landed in Tangle. One snare. I just need one snare and him to splash one time. And of course he lands his Entangle. I have to wait again. Can I? I have no food. I literally just have to hope that I hit really hard on him, that I have to eat, and I don't actually die here. We have one last chance in one second. Please. Oh my god, we landed it. And he splashed his. No way. Oh, that could not have been closer. Holy. Okay, I have the... My adrenaline is pumping right now. I don't know why, but that was so insane. We can now actually unlock the combat bracelet. That is so nice to see. Look at those stats. That is uh, some really, really useful stats for the account. Oh, you love to see it. 88 Revenant, another massive Revenant task. And that is another 88 Revenant Knights defeated with no uniques. Oh, look at that. We just got the first Slayer task of a monster that is actually requiring a Slayer level to kill. 142 jellies and really there is only one thing that I could use from this table and that is the Mithril Boots at a 1 in 32 drop rate. So I'm going to do this task and just pick that up hopefully. And not too long into the task, there they are, the Mithril Boots has been unlocked, but uh, they have negative range bonus, so we're not going to be using them for now, but when I do melee, the defense bonuses is pretty good. So right now I have something massive to talk about. This could actually help me on the Revenant grind for the Revenant weapon really a lot. So currently there is a poll running if they should implement Slayer Task extension for Revenants. Since the loot changes to Revenants alongside the Wilderness boss rework, they've become pretty appealing as a Wilderness task. And by the way, if you don't know, while killing Revenants on a Slayer task, they have a 5 times multiplier on the drop rate of the Thamron Scepter, Vigoras Chainmess, and the Craft's Bow, which obviously are the weapons I'm after. Now what this poll actually is, is for the low price of 100 Slayer points, Crystallia would be able to assign you between 100 to 150 Revenants. And previously it was only 40 to 100, so this really, in theory, is going to more than probably half the grind that I will have to do, or half the revenant tasks that I need to get overall to get the weapons. So hopefully this is going to pass, if it does, I will update you guys on when it does, and of course I will unlock this. I actually just hit the last attack level I need on the scorpion task, I've actually been trying to do as many melee tasks as I can to get 60 attack, for the Vigoras Chain May. So now I'm pretty much done with melee. I don't need to train it anymore until I get the Vigoras Chain Maze. And that might take a while. So all I'm going to be doing now is basically task with ranged. And that should actually be a lot faster as well. Because ranged tasks I can do probably at two times the speed of a melee task. No way. We just got an ancient crystal. That is really really rare and not useful at all it's 150k i'll take it but uh, man that is pretty much as rare as getting a weapon i'd say oh i'm being attacked by someone snakeskin hero i have a lot of food right now so i might as well just try to f oh my god dude it might actually kill him this guy has amethyst arrows, by the way, so it might actually be worth me staying here and trying to kill him, because if I do kill him, that- Oh my god, he's almost dead! Oh, he's actually dead! That is amethyst arrows unlocked, I think. It is, yes. Look at that. Amethyst arrows has been unlocked. Amulet of Glory already had that. That is a massive upgrade, actually. He just came out of nowhere. Random event, giving me some nice unlocks. No! No way! We actually got this- Oh my god. No way! That is the only weapon I did not want. Oh, it's so rare. I needed the crossbow and the vigoras, and of course I get the scepter. 
Man, I've done like five or six Revenant tasks off video, just hoping to get a weapon that is useful. And I get the only one that really isn't, but uh, it looks pretty good at least. I can train magic with this. It's basically a trident for the wilderness, so it is pretty decent as in terms of a magic weapon. But uh, otherwise than that, it's not really good. None of the wilderness bosses that drop the Void Waker pieces can be killed with the scepter, so that is why I don't really need it. I thought I would give it a spin at the Revenant Knights and see if it would be faster to use this instead of the range setup that I was using, but uh, you can clearly see at my mage level and with my magic gear being absolutely terrible, this is a massive downgrade, so I guess this is just going to be in my bank for a while. And a massive milestone is going to be reached, 100 Slayer tasks has been completed, and we have done many, 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 many hours of Slayer in this video, and of course we got both the Avarice and unfortunately the scepter in this video so far. Now ever since I've unlocked the black dragonhide armor in this video, along with now the amethyst arrows, I have been plotting and scheming for a potential alternative way of actually getting the void waker done without any of the revenant weapons. I've always had the idea that I might be able to kill Arteo for one of the void waker pieces, not with the craftsbow, but just with the imbued magic shortbow. I've also been looking into crush weapon alternatives for both Spindle and the Calvarion for the other two pieces, but currently I only have the rune Scimitar. But the thing is, if I kill Arteo, there is a 1 in 358 chance of getting a dragon two-handed sword. This is a crush weapon that is vastly better at those bosses than the rune Scimitar, but also a lot worse than the Vigoras Chain Maze, so either way, the Vigoras would be the best. But this is an alternative if I can't get my hands on it. Now when killing Arteo you do need to bind him because otherwise he will run to you and smack you for massive amounts of melee damage and uh, currently I only have the snare ability which holds the boss for 10 seconds. And because my kills are going to be pretty long with this setup I would love to in the future get 79 magic for the entangle spell holding it for 15 seconds. But that is going to be quite a grind I might do in the background with some alking over time and until I get there I'm just going to be using the snare spell. And that is the first RTO Casey of the entire account for 12k coins, not the best drop, and very messy indeed. I made a lot of mistakes, so next skills are probably going to be better. Second Casey of RTO is Raynar Seeds, pretty good drop actually. Definitely getting into it a bit more, this is Casey number 10, and on average I would say I'm getting a kill every 3-4 to four minutes, which is definitely good. Oh, soul runes, wait! That is actually a new unlock on the account, I've never had soul runes, I don't know, there might have been an easy way of getting them, but I guess I have them now. After this RTO kill, that is now 20 KC done, and we get some grimy toad flax, actually a very good drop, 170k or something. But that is actually a very big milestone, because I'm not sure why it works like this, but if I go out and I peek this, it now says that there is no one in there. Before it says you have to have 20 KC to even be able to peek, which is kind of a weird mechanic because that means everyone who is new to this boss just goes in and crash people all the time. So now, for example, after banking, I can see that there is activity inside and I will just world hop. And that's that. We are flying through the kills, honestly. This is number 50 of the grind and I'm going to be going for 100 in this video. So this is the halfway point. No uniques yet, but this is the overall loot from 50 KC. So I would say the regular drops that the boss drops are pretty profitable anyways. This guy with pirate boots attacked me, and uh, this is what happened. Oh, that was a big MSP spec. Arteo was actually MVP this fight. Did we get any upgrades? I think there was snakeskin bandana in there. Oh my god, I'm getting attacked by Arteo. I think there was snakeskin bandana in there, and I think dragonstone bolts. Dragonstone Bolts Enchanted. I was only using Runite Bolts before. That is actually a massive upgrade, I think. And that is 75 KC done. And I am actually trying the Dragonstone Bolts now with the Rune Crossbow. And for the past 20 kills I have, and I would have to say it is pretty decent. I am not sure if it's better than the MSB, but definitely feels like it could be. After this, we're hitting 100 RTO KC. And uh, I want to say that I'm very pleasantly surprised with how this actually went, even though I got no uniques at all. This was just a trying period for how long this grind could actually take if I go on drop rate for the Void Waker piece. I anticipated it to be a massive grind without the Crofts Bow, but at my average kills of like 3 minutes with this setup, 
the entire grind for 912 KC if I go on drop rate for the Void Waker piece is only about 45 hours, which I can definitely do. This absolutely does not mean, however, that I'm completely done with Wilderness Slayer. It just means that I can do a mix of Wilderness Slayer and try to get the Revenant weapons for most efficient routes. And I can do some RTO in the meantime as well. But before we end the video, I did get 8 Larin's keys that I have to open from all the Wilderness Slayer. So let's see what we get. And the last two keys are going to be giving us Rune Plate Legs and... Dragon Fruit Tree Seed. That is actually worth quite a lot, I think. How much is that? Those are nearly 600k. And from all that, we made 1.2 million. Oh my god, no way. No way. No way. We actually got the Crafts Bow. No. Oh my god. Oh my. Dude. This is like one of the best things I could have got. I think the Vigoras would have been better, but the Crafts Bow is the second best I- Oh my god. I'm saying oh my god a lot, but this I just started. I, this is the first task of the entire video I did on Revenants. 1,077 Revenants. We have both the Thamerons, the Avarice, and now the Crafts Bow. This actually unlocks like everything for me. So with a strong start like that, we're going to be selling all the loot that I've got from Revenants to this point, and also the RTO loot from 100 in the last video, to buy Ether to charge the Crafts Bow, and we're going to be getting into RTO right away. And with most of the money, I've bought 10,000 Revenant Ether, 200 Blighted Super Stores, and 100 Divine Ranging Potions, and we're going to jump straight into RTO. If you don't know how it works, you need to charge the crafts bow to be able to use it with a thousand ether and anything above that is actual charge for the weapon. So I charged it with 1.5k, meaning I will have 500 charges to use in the weapon right now. And if I die, I do lose all of those charges. But I do have a decent amount of money now and I can buy a lot of ether, so we should be completely fine. But it is now time to start the RTO grind and in this video, we're going to be getting the Void Waker piece from the boss however long that takes. In the last video, every single kill was around 3 minutes on average with the rune crossbow, and judging by the hits that I'm getting right now, it is looking like this is going to be vastly faster. And that's it, that was a 1 minute kill on RTO. Yeah, the crossbow is a game changer. Oh no way! We got the Claws of Callisto! This is the upgrade for the Vigoras Chain Maze, it is like a 1 in 600 drop rate, and it's worth nearly 4 million GP. Unfortunately, I cannot use this as I don't have the Vigoras Chain Maze. But if I would get one in the future, that is really nice to have. <laughs> First delete of the grind. I can definitely not do this as I'm locked to the wilderness. But uh, yeah, even the first step is undoable. And I don't really know the drop rate of this. I'll put it on the screen. You what? Uh, that was like 20 kills in between, and we have another class of Callisto. Let's have a look at the collection log. Two class of Callisto in 136 KC. Can we get this lucky on the Void Waker piece, please? I have absolutely no food left, and that is it. 36 max hit ranged, and that is the first death of the grind today, so that is unfortunate. Oh my god, no way! Yo! 168 KC and we get- Oh my god, that's 66 million GP! Oh, that feels so good to be done with this boss. Kiting this around is so obnoxious, even with the crafts bow. Yes, let's go! Huh? That is one of the three pieces done already at 168 KC. That is unbelievable. I mean, just look at this collection log. We got the Void Waker piece just now. Two class of Callisto. Unfortunately, nothing else but all of that in 168 KC. That is absolutely ridiculous. But with that incredible luck and RTO now being completed on the Bronze Man, it is time to go for the second Void Waker piece. This one is dropped by Spindle, and there's actually three overall items that I really would love to get from this boss. The first one is the Dragon Two-Hander, which I needed from RTO as well, but of course I still need it. Secondly is the Fangs of Ananares. Unlike the Claws of Callisto, I can actually use this to upgrade my Crafts Bow to the Web Weaver Bow, making it even stronger than it already is and giving it a special attack. And lastly, of course, we have the Void Waker Gem at the same drop rate as the Void Waker Hilt at 1 in 912. 
Now, Spindle's attack pattern is very simple. It is 8 ranged attacks and 8 magic attacks with some special attacks in between. And if you just time your prayers to this every single time, you're going to be taking 0 damage. Yeah, the craftsbow is definitely doing good enough to kill this boss. That was like 2 minutes for the first one and we get a rune pickaxe. I've seen those before. And with this one, we have 10 KC done. No uniques just yet, but we get... Oh, Diamond Bolts Enchanted. That is the first ones of the account, I think. Yes, it is. I don't really know if there's any use for them, but maybe we can find one. So we just hit 20 KC, and that now officially means I can use the peak option to see if anyone is in there, so I don't have to go in and just world hop if anyone is in there. Did I just get nothing? 200 dark fishing bait? Where are they? Oh, they're over there. <laughs> what is even what even is this? That has to be worth like absolutely nothing for me to have. Uh, let's have a look. 800 GP, 4 GP each. That is the worst drop I've seen. We're definitely making some decent money, but we're getting no uniques. So that is now 50 spindle KC completed, and we've made 1. Point nearly 4 million so far, but if we get a unique, that's spiking up. I was starting to wonder when we were going to be getting them. We are like twice the drop rate of that, but that is definitely one of the more valuable drops. So we are now at 86kc of Spindle, and I've kind of realized how many Blighted Superstores I'm going through, and they're actually kind of expensive, and that is because I'm 45 prayer. If you don't know how it works, the higher prayer level you have, the more prayer points your restores actually restore. So I think it's time to sell my loot tab that I have of 8 million GP, and that does include the class of Callista because I can't even use them right now, I can always buy them back in the future as I am a bronze man, and we're going to be spending this on quite a lot of dragon bones. Ended up buying 1.5k dragon bones and even got 3 million GP left over, so let's see what prayer level I can get with this. It is very early in the morning right now, so there's not many people online, so I'm going to be a bit more risky, I'm bringing 100 noted dragon bones to the altar, and hopefully I don't get PK'd. You have got to be kidding me. I, li I literally just got here one second ago and this guy logs in the exact same second. Luckily, he doesn't seem to be the best geared and he's quite low level compared to me. I think I already gapped him. Actually, a very big level coming in here. 52 prayer and that is a massive unlock because Smite is really good for PKing. And on top of that... That is the last prayer I can actually use on this account as all the other ones are locked outside of the wilderness. Because they made a change where you can actually use the bottom bone in your inventory and it will just take from the top of your inventory every single time, I've moved my inventory to just spam like this and get the most insane prayer experience an hour. I honestly don't really know how far I can get, but that is 60 prayer achieved on the account and also 75 combat, so that is a pretty nice milestone to have got only through Wilderness. I didn't think we would get this far, honestly, but that is 70 prayer achieved and ideally I would love to get 71. If I have to buy some extra bones, I will do it because at 71 you get one extra prayer restore from your potion, so that is definitely worth going for. You can't make this up, there's no way, I am on my last inventory, can I just get please 71, that's all I need, yes, we got 71, and I'm going to get PK'd right, I'll just die, it's all good, we got 71, that's all I wanted, and that was actually the last bones I had, so, I'm just going to be done now. We are now back to Spindle, and this is 100 KC done on the boss, no uniques just yet, but maybe now? No, dark crabs only, but I can definitely feel a difference with how much these actually restore now. And basically every single trip so far I've had prayer potions left over and I've started bringing less and less every time, so that is really good. Oh, we are making money today! 408k the first grimy snapdragon drop. Those are actually kind of rare, but they are worth so much. Actually, a very big level coming in here. 80 ranged has just been achieved, and obviously any range level that I get is just going to speed up the spindle grind, so they are very welcomed. Oh, no way! We got the Fangs of Ananatus! Very early as well. I've been so lucky on the Wilderness bosses so far. This is the ideal drop, honestly. 180kc, and that is now the Web Weaver upgrade unlocked. Now, to actually make this on my own, I need 85 fletching, but you can actually pay Durs Venator, this guy right here, 500k, and he will make it for you. So, let's have a look and do that. I've never done this before, and I think this is kind of how you make the uh, Void Waker as well, just with another NPC. 
And uh, yes, let's do that. And that is the Web Weaver Bow Unlocked. God damn, this has better stats than the Crafts Bow, of course, just straight up. And on top of that, it has a special attack as well, and it looks so good. The attack animation is different, and I really like it. I think it looks really cool. But on top of that, let's go ahead and give the special attack a try. It takes 50%, shoots four times in the air, has a pretty nice animation as well, and the hits are pretty good. I mean, let's try it again. This is definitely going to speed up the grind. No! Fucking way! What is this luck? 188 KC. We're done. I just got here with the Web Weaver bow the first trip. And we're already done. Another one in 900 please completed. On another side note, when I got the Void Waker hilt, I think it was like 65 million. It's 90 million now. So uh, if I add this, we have 143 million worth in two Void Waker pieces. But now I am not really sure how to get the last one from Calvarion without having any good melee weapon. I was kind of banking on getting the Dragon Two-Handed Sword, which definitely isn't great at Calvarion, but it is a crush weapon. And honestly, right now the best crush that I, weapon that I have is a Rune Two Age Sword. I don't have it in the bank, but I do have it unlocked. If we go over here and have a look, the Rune Two Age Sword. I could try it at Calvarion, but I have a feeling that is going to be horrendous. My honest opinion is that I don't think this is actually going to work at all. I think my kills would be like over 10 minutes or even more than that. But I'll give it a try. I'm going to try just one with the Rune 2 Age. And if it is really that bad, I'll try to find a way to get a better crush weapon. So even with a super combat potion and both these prayers activated for the highest melee damage I possibly can get at my level, it has been... Two minutes roughly and I've done even less than half the HP of the first phase of the boss. And that does not include the minions it also spawns that I will have to kill. So yeah, it's looking like it, this would be like 10 mini kills at minimum. And that is the first kill done with a Rune 2 Age Sword. It was a bit faster than I anticipated, but uh, still, 8 minutes per kill. And that means, by the way, if I go on drop rate for the Void Waker piece, using this method, that's 121 hours. So these are the stats of Calvarion, and you can see that the range defense of this is vastly higher than the melee, but I thought maybe the Web Weaver bow with all the range gear that I have is actually stronger regardless. And as you can see in the background, that seems to definitely be the case. Okay, that was a lot faster than I anticipated it to honestly be. Just below 3 minutes, which is nuts. I think that is guaranteed even faster than if I would have a Dragon Two-Handed Sword. So we're coming up on 10kc here, and the Web Weaver bow is definitely decent, but I'm getting 4 mini kills sometimes, 3 mini kills, so definitely the slowest out of all the wilderness bosses. And there has actually just been an update that I want to actually deviate from this wilderness boss from a bit to actually take in. And that update is they finally put in the Revenant extension for a bigger task. You can get up to 150 of them in one task, and because of that, I want to spend some of these points and try to get some good Revenant tasks and actually give the Vigoras Chainmace a try. Because if I would get one, I can upgrade the weapon to an Ursine Chainmace and actually just blast Calvarion. So let's go ahead and unlock it. That is now Revenant unlocked on the account. And let's hope we get one. All right, I already had one from the last time when I got the crafts bow, so let's go and finish that first. You know, the best part about actually having the Web Weaver bow is that I don't have to save spot these anymore. I can just face tank them and kill them in a couple of seconds, and all of these tasks are going to be so fast. Just look at the damage I'm dealing. So that slayer task of Revenant that I just finished off was 46 Revenant. So let's see the next time we get a Revenant task how big it is. You know, the more that I think about going for the Vigoras Chain Maze really makes me want to do it even more because I kind of realized that, that is the only thing I'm really missing on the Revenant's collection log. Except of course all the relics, but that is, I don't care about that too much. 
But if I would have all the Revenant weapons, the Avarice, that would be just so clean for completionism on the account. And because I can do all the tasks so fast with the Webweaver bow, I'm going to be running through these so quickly and also getting a lot of ranged experience at the same time, which is going to be beneficial anyways for Calvarion if I do not get the Vigoras. That is what we call a healthy Revenant task, 111 of them, let's see if we can get lucky. Oh, we, we got an ancient totem, 1 million GP, I already had this on the collection log, somehow I don't even remember how I got it. I am pretty much 100% dead here, I have no more food, and the only downside to having the webweaver bow is that now I risk my avarice every single time, and that is minus like 900k every death. With absolute record speed, that is the first revenant task done with the webweaver bow, and uh, unfortunately no vigoras this time. 135 more revenants, that is beautiful. Oh my god, ancient re that's the most expensive one I think, 16 million GP. Also another collection log slot, oh that is good to see, that is a lot of money on the account. That's actually going to cover so many potential deaths, 15.8 million GP, yeah that's really nice to see on the account. We have 18 million cash by right now, that's kind of crazy, and the entire bank that I have is 171 million. I mean, even at this point, if I'm going for the Vigoras Chain Maze and I really go for it, I might complete the entire log, I'm only missing 3 statuettes and the Vigoras Chain Maze. 135 more Revenant Knights defeated, and no Vigoras just yet. Now when it comes to Larin's keys, there has been a bit of an update, you can actually sell these now on the Grand Exchange, I am not going to be doing this because they are going for like, I think 220k, I'll only sell one of them just to see the price, 212k, so you actually make more money doing this, but uh, I would like to have the chance of getting Dagon High instead in the future. And for this video, this is going to be the last Revenant task, 125. They have all been very hefty and good tasks, so let's see what we can end on. At this point, I can pretty much stay here as long as I want, but the risk of that is of course if PK is like that to log in. And I have a looting bag that looks like this, 1.4 million GP nearly. I should probably go and bank. This guy has been attacking me for a while now, and that was my last food, but I am unfrozen here in just two seconds. If I can just run down a couple of levels, I can teleport out. One level, please. No way. I actually think I could have teleported out there. I think I missed it. I think I already was at 30. I had to go to bed yesterday, and I woke up now and finished off the task because there was just too many PKs here yesterday. I was getting PK like every five kills or something crazy like that. But that is another Revenant task completed. No unique at all, no totems, no anything. So let's now go and do the last thing of this video. As is pretty much a tradition at this point, we're going to be opening all the Larian's keys I've collected during this video, which wasn't that many this time. I didn't do too much Wilderness Slayer. But let's go ahead and open six Larian's keys and see what we can get. Dagon High piece, of course, is the dream to get, but everything else is just decent money, I guess. Two more to go, pure essence unlocked. And for the last key we get... Coal. Not that good. I don't think that was worth too much. Let's put everything into the looting bag and check the value of this. This is worth 339k. So if I would have sold all of these items, or all the keys rather, I would have earned way more than that. Like 1 million more than that. So it is definitely a risk to not sell them. But the, the chance of getting Dagon High definitely is just enticing. The progress in this video was in incredibly good i mean just look at my inventory and let's actually have a price check of all of these items so we kind of know how much all the valuables of the account is worth 177 million gp and most of that made in just this video the void waker pieces the web weaver bow we made that completely from scratch with getting the crafts in the beginning and the fangs of an anatis later on so we are definitely making some incredible progress on the bronze man and i can really feel the void waker being so close we only need to get the one piece from calvarion and I would love to get the Vigoras, of course, before we go on to that grind. Today's episode needs no long introduction. We only have two simple goals we want to reach in this video. 
The first one is 1000 Revenant Knight kills on task to try and get the Vigora's Chain Maze. Second goal is, regardless if we get the Vigora's Chain Maze or not, to get the last Void Waker piece from Calvarion. So let's start off with Slayer and get a Revenant task. We are starting off the Slayer grind very strong in this video with 150 tasks completed for 375 points. My goal is pretty much going to be to stack up on as many Slayer points as I possibly can and then skip for as many of the Revenant tasks that I can get. I need around 9 or maybe 8 of them to reach 1000. Hopefully that is not going to take too long. I actually love that they made the Larian's keys tradable, and you can actually see their real value now that they've adjusted a bit. 143,000 GP for one single key. That is so good. Really puts in perspective how profitable Wilderness Layer is. Oh, 85 ranged, almost missed it. So that is a pretty nice milestone. Five more levels, which we might actually get in this video. And we're 90 ranged only in the Wilderness. And that's it, the first Revenant task, 125 of them, that is a pretty hefty task. I think the minimum is 100 and the highest 150, so right in the middle. I am not entirely sure why, but Runelight missed a couple of kills on the tracker, but this is the last one of the task, 125 Revenant Knights killed, but it only tracked 121. No uniques, the money is great here as always, of course, but I will actually go for a thousand kills on the Runelight tracker, which means if it misses a couple of kills here and there, I might go for like 1,100 in the end. Another Revenant task that did not take that long at all, 115. <gasps> no way! No! Oh, we actually got it! Oh my! We got the Vigorous Chain Maze after no time at all! I've only been here for like 200kc or something. It's two tasks of Revenant Knights. Let's have a look at the collection log. This is ridiculous. We have every single weapon. The only things we're missing really is the emblems. That is, I can now use this for Calv Calvarion. I can't even speak. I can't get my words out because this is so incredibly lucky. On top of having the Vigoras now, I of course have the Claws of Callisto, which is the upgraded version of the Vigoras, the Ursine Chain Maze. Unfortunately, I need 70 attack to be able to use this. So until I get 70 attack, I will train attack with this weapon on Calvarion. I will have to use the normal Vigoras Chain Maze, which still is just incredibly good at Calvarion compared to anything else. I guess after all this time, this is it. We're going for the last Void Waker piece with our new Vigoras Chain Maze. And I actually have a couple of things I want to mention before we get into the grind. I want to get, of course, 70 attack for the Ursine Chain Maze, but we also need 75 attack. So we have both the Ursine Chain Maze down here. There are so many weapons in the game. And then at 75, we have the Void Waker. So even if I get really lucky here on Calvarion, I actually still need 75 attack. So there are actually going to be two different scenarios that could happen. Either I get really lucky and I just spoon the Void Waker piece. In this case, I will actually go back to Revenants to train my attack all the way to 75, to try to get the missing emblems that we have. If not, however, I get all the way to 75 attack just by killing Calvarion while grinding the last piece. I'm just going to be done at that point, and we just have the Void Waker and we've completed the challenge. And of course, in the last video, I did some Calvarion, so we're starting on 11 KC, but we have absolutely nothing on the collection log. This weapon is absolutely incredible at this boss, 27 hits, and we are hitting really consistently all the time. Of course, the dogs will die very easily as well, so this is going to be an absolute treat to use at this boss. Oh, there we go, that was the max hit, 31, with only 63 strength, of course, potted up to 75. But yeah, that is really good, and as I said, the hits are just so consistent that these kills are way faster than the Web Weaver bow and the first drop of the video, Magic Logs. And of course, for every strength and attack level that I get on this grind, it's going to go even faster. So after timing a couple of kills, it seems like the average kill with my strength level and attack and the Vigoras Chain Maze is around one and a half a minute, which is better than the Web Weaver bow, and that is not with the Ursine upgrade yet, and of course, way worse stats uh, than my ranged. Oh! Oh! No way! What? <laughs> what? 
is with this account, man. Oh my god, 25 KC. Oh my, all this preparation, and this is what happens. 25 KC. Just look at the collection log. Nothing except the Void Waker blade. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're making the Void Waker. When I took on this challenge to make a Void Waker from scratch on a Bronze Man account locked into the wilderness, I did not anticipate that I would get this lucky. We have on RTO 168kc for the Void Waker piece and two claws of Callisto. For Spindle and Venonatus, we have 188kc for the Void Waker piece. And now on Calvarion, we have 25kc for the last piece. These are all one in 912. That is just, I don't even know what to say. And of course, for Revenants, as you guys already know, we have all the weapons in the 1678 KC. But let's go ahead and finish this. We still, of course, need 75 attack, as I mentioned earlier. But let's go ahead and make the Void Waker with Madame Sicaro right here. You need 500k as well. This is an absolutely monumental moment. That is the Void Waker unlocked on the Bronze Man account. And of course, as I said, I need 75 attack. So we are going to be doing what I talked about earlier. We are going to Revenant and I'm going to be doing this off task. We're going to be killing either knights, maybe dark beasts, maybe dragons. I guess we'll see all the way to 75 attack. And hopefully we can actually get the last of these emblems. They're all one in 4,400 drop rate except for the ancient emblem. But uh, we can get this one from Maledictus. Besides the chance of getting those last emblems that I need for the collection log, we of course will make a lot of money doing this, and uh, that is going to fund my future PKing on this account, so that is an added benefit. You know, I'm being a bit back and forth right now, but I have been a Revenant Knight for just a bit now, and I feel like these are a bit too tanky for my Vigoras Chainmates, and I could get way better combat rates at maybe some of the other Revenants at not that much of a worse drop rate. I'm getting around 47,000 attack experience an hour, and I would like to try some lower tier ones, which still have a decent drop rate of the emblems, but maybe can give me quite a lot more experience an hour. Actually finding a world where no one was camping these orcs was actually quite a challenge, but we finally found one. The drop rate of an emblem here is 1 in 4,840, meanwhile the other ones were 1 in 4,400. And I do think these are killed way faster, so actually getting the emblems should be faster this way. Aside from the fact that this is way more chill as I take barely any damage compared to the Revenant Knights, the experience rate is vastly higher. Look at that, 75,000 experience an hour. That is just way too good to pass up on. And of course, these are the drops that we want to see. All of this is going straight to supplies to future PKing. Another added benefit to this spot is that I am way more unlikely to actually die, because this is below 30 wilderness and I have a ring of wealth, and you can actually use a menu entry swapper, swap the left click to grand exchange, and I can basically just mouse over this, and if I left click it, I teleport right away to the GE. Oh, oh my god, no, that is not the ancient statuette I need. Okay, but I'll take it, 2 million GP. It says item unlock for the first time, but I already have it on my collection log, which I don't know how that happened, but uh, yeah, nice, a duplicate statue. We are dead, the first death of the grind, that is like a million down the drain, because I lost my avarice. First milestone coming in, 65 attack, 5 more levels to go, and we can use that Ursine Chain Maze. It is time to do something a bit risky, we are 67 attack, and everything has been going good so far, and there are not too many PKers, but usually I charge the Vigoras Chain Maze with around 700 attacks, and it is now time to charge it with 2000 attacks, and stay there for the entirety of that duration. I just want to try and build as big of a looting bag as possible. This is extremely risky, I might die, it is very likely, but I want to try the challenge and see if I can do it. The main goal of course is the experience and staying here for as long as possible without banking is of course the best experience I could get, so that is why I am doing this challenge, even though I might lose money by dying, it is worth it for the experience, but hopefully I don't die. 
So we just hit the first level, 68 attack, and we have how many charges left? We have 1,364, and this is what the looting bag is looking like right now, 900k risk. With all of that loot and what I am equipped with, we are risking well over 2 million right now. Okay, we have the first PK attacking me, and I think I should be able to escape, because he doesn't have teleblock, I think, and I only need to run down a bit... I'm not going to reset my stats or anything, I can escape people if I get attacked, because I mean I would die regardless, but uh, I can't do anything right now to restock. With barely any supplies left, we just hit the halfway point, and that is 1000 ether used. Let's have a look at the looting bag. How much have I gained? 1 point, nearly 2 million GP so far. Oh shit, we have a peak air. He's walking, he missed his teleblock, splashed, and we get the teleport, easy as that. There is literally with my supplies now no chance that I can really stay there longer, so I unfortunately would just have to end it here. I at least could stay there for around 1050 ether, and we got 1 point nearly 3 million worth of loot. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, that's a pretty good trip. Bro, look at this, this guy is... <laughs> and he's dead this guy was so sneaky he was camping under that other guy for a while it's probably the same guy's two accounts yeah that was <laughs> that was so sneaky i have an escape i want to try when i go out here and you go to the right all these trees are blocking i saw this on a telecon video if you haven't seen his revlocked account go check it out but yeah this works fine i mean you kind of could just get passed around and you can escape Yes! Let's go! Uh, the 8 million effigy! Ancient effigy has been achieved. One of the actual effigies that I am missing on the collection log. That means we only need the lowest tier one and I think like the 5 million one. It has been a long time, but that is now 70 attack achieved and it is time for the Ursine Chainmates upgrade to be made. The Ursine Chainmace has 4 Crush Bonus and 8 Strength Bonus upgrade over the Vigora's Chainmace, so this is actually quite a massive upgrade. Let's pay 500k and get the Ursine Chainmace unlocked, and also let's put some Ether into it. It looks so good, and this of course also has a special attack, which is really good for escaping. It's a bleed effect that also removes Run from your opponent. They can't activate it for a couple of seconds, so if I hit this spec on a PKer, I can escape really easily. Check this out. One hit with the Ursine Chainmace, he is now a walker, and I can easily escape. The power of this weapon to escape PKers is insanely good. Let's quickly finish off the last levels for the Void Waker. 71 attack. 72 attack. 73. Ancient Crystal, 150k. That is actually pretty rare, 1 in 1,600, not as rare as the totems I need, but I already had it on the collection log, so not too great. Oh, we have another ancient statuette. I actually had to go over to Dark Beasts because orcs were absolutely packed. I guess that paid off. One more level to go, 74 attack. Another ancient crystal, I'll take it. And the final level is about to be hit, 75 attack has now been achieved, didn't even get a pop-up for that, I feel slightly scammed, but uh, let's go ahead and go to the bank and get the Void Waker out. It's actually crazy how fast I've been able to do this challenge, I have only played 9 days and 13 hours, and I've gained every single Revenant weapon, including the Web Weaver upgrade and the Ursine Chain Maze, and now we can equip the Void Waker as well, for the final challenge being completed and there we have it that is the best pking weapon in the entire game now equipped on the bronze man locked to the wilderness this is my collection log right now on revenant and that is where i'm going to be leaving it this is all the loot that i got from the kills that i did but before we take this void waker for a spin i want to get my strength level up and this time i'm just going to be afking monsters in the wilderness with the ursine chain maze to level it up because revenants require a lot of attention I decided to go with Elder Chaos Druids for my AFK training method, and we get an actual unlock for the account. That is really cool. Elder Chaos Top. I'm not sure I'm going to be using this for really anything, but it's cool to have. 
And just like that, 70 strength achieved, and we are now done with combat training. In the beginning of the video, when I did Walden and Slayer to get the Revenant tasks I needed, I got 17 Larin's keys. So we're going to be opening them first, selling all the loot that we got from Revenant and these keys, and then use that for PKing supplies. No Dagonite pieces so far, and we're down to the last keys, raw swordfish unlock, and we got no Dagonite pieces from that, but we made 2.5 million. Everything has been sold, we now have a 32 million cash pile on the account, and it's time to buy some PKing supplies. Whether you like it or not, this is the peak performance of old school RuneScape PKing setups. I am going to be using this gear right here, which is definitely not optimal. And we have the Void Waker as a special attack weapon, and even a just straight up melee weapon sometimes. I think this is the best chance I have to kill someone if I kind of surprise them with a Void Waker spec instead of using it all the time. And Dragonstone Bolts Enchanted can hit ridiculously high as my range level is also pretty decent. You might have also noticed by now I am in Bounty Hunter, which was just recently released and could not have had a better timing for this account. It is super easy to find fights in this area and there is no protection prayers and no freezes allowed in this minigame, which makes it a perfect area for me to try to get some cheesy kills and just easier PKing time for me as someone who is not the most seasoned PKer. We have our first fight, King Hydra 2. Let's see how this goes. I think the only way I can get a KO on this account is if I get a big bolt hit into the Void Waker spec. Let's see if we can get... Okay, we have one hit, and now we try the Void Waker spec. 29, not a max hit, and 17. Okay, so I just mostly wanted to try the specs out, see what I could hit, so I can hit more than 30 at least. So after getting a couple of matchups, I've realized basically everyone is 99 HP, just full-on PKing accounts, which of course makes sense. My account is not really built good for PKing, unfortunately. So that happens. I get absolutely KO'd by most people who I fight because they are really built for PKing, and I just basically went for the Void Waker. Oh. Bro, what are these hits? Oh my god. Oh my... <laughs> So after getting completely one shot twice in a row, we finally found someone that I could have a decent fight with, this guy named Mozart, and I actually fought him I think like five times in total, and we had really good fights, both of us were kind of close to dying multiple times, and these were the most fun fights I had probably during the entire time, we had some really close calls, both me almost KOing him and him KOing me. And unfortunately, these were very far and few between. At my level, I just don't really have the combat stats to be able to kill people frequently. So having these fights, even though this guy probably had a good advantage over me, was pretty fun to do. Oh my god, that was definitely a chance. I hit 18 with the 30 HP. I could have hit that. That could have been the first kill. Oh, that's a big bolt. Go for the Void Waker. Come on, Void Waker, do something. 27. Oh, I could have hit that. He had 7 HP left. Another chance. No way he hit that. Wait, I'm alive? Yo, I'm... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How am I not dead? You know what? Whoever I get as the last target, this guy right here, is going to be my last fight because I just feel way too much like a prey. I can't really do anything here. My account is just not built for this, so let's see what the last fight's going to be like. I'm fighting to the death, I have no food left, so it all comes down to the RNG of my bolt procs right now. Can we get a good one, or am I just going to die? It's looking like I'm dead at this point. He is just getting unlucky hits though at this point. There we go, I go down for the last one, and we don't really lose too much every time we die, but uh, yeah, this is impossible. But you know what, even though we might have not built the optimal PKing account for this combat level, we did complete the goal of this series, which was to make the Void Waker from scratch, locked into the wilderness on a bronze man from level 3. And on top of that, we also made the Ursine Chain Maze. We got the Thamron Scepter, unfortunately not upgraded, and the Web Weaver Bow. So there's not really much to complain about, we completed the series and more. And with that, I officially call this series completed, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you want to be updated with my future series or my own drop rate videos which I'm currently working on. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.